this video goes fast. What am I talking about? I'm about to do seven examples in under seven minutes of evaluating trigonometric functions using the reciprocal, the quotient, and the Pythagorean identities. Oh, damn. I'm down to six minutes and 40 seconds. So our first example, they give the cosecant of theta is root 5 over 2, and they're looking for the sine. Fortunately for we, we know the reciprocal identity. The sine is 1 over the cosecant of theta. So I plug my cosecant of theta right on in there. And some of you may have heard that rhyme, that hum, that hem. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and we rationalize that denominator, and we find that's going to be 2 root 5 over 5. Next, the secant of theta is a minus 4. Find the cosine of theta. Right, you're probably not keeping up with me by writing, so just watch. Don't believe me, just watch. My reciprocal identity says that 1 over the secant is the cosine. Fine. And just to clean it up, I'm going to write that minus out front. And I'm done. I'm done. And I'm on to the next one. Hey! Number 17, they give me the sine of theta is minus root 11 over 6, but there's more. They're looking for the tangent of theta when the cosine of theta is also minus 5 over 6. Sick! We know the quotient identity, yeah, or ratio identity, of tangent is sine over the cosine. Fine, I'm going to go and I'm going to plug it in, plug it in. It's going to make the whole room smell fresh. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and they fight. After the fisticuffs, we find that that's root 11 over 5. Fine. I want another example, this one. The cotangent of theta is minus the third root of 5. I know there's a lot going on here. But trig is notoriously lazy, and we see the cosine to the third of theta is really actually the cosine of theta to the third. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to plug in what they gave. If I'm cubing something, it's it times itself three times. Not once, not twice, but thrice. And minus and minus and minus make mass. Just kidding. Minus. And then five times five times five is 25. And the cube root of 125 is five. Now, I probably showed way more work than I needed to. So we got our work, 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 work. Next one. That's new notation. That says theta is in quadrant 2. All right. They wanted to find the tangent of theta when the sine is 8 fifteenths. But the sine is opposite over hypotenuse if I was drawing a right triangle right. Now, what do I want to do? I want to do x squared plus y squared is r squared. My Pythagorean. Oh, 8 and 15 squared, respectively. That's 64 and 225, respectively. Subtract off 64. We explore. That's 161. Now, I take the square root of both sides, but I'm not going to forget the plus or minus. Now it's time to choose a sign. I see our x value is negative, so I'm choosing x. Yeah, we're at a club, and it's Tuesday. I got your girl in the club, and it's Tuesday. And we choose A, minus sign, because my x is negative in quadrant 2. What's next? The tangent, that's the opposite, over the adjacent, OPP, yeah, you know me, over ADJ. Play that song. That's how I get 8 over minus the square root of 161. I rationalize, and that's how I got that 8. Great. Gangster! Ah, we gotta speed this up. Why? This example, I have the tangents root 5, theta's in quadrant 1. Find the secant. Now, wait a secant. I'm using identities because I'm trying to get my identity game strong. My sine squared plus my cosine squared, that's 1. That's the Pythagorean. If I go and I divide all of them by the cosine squared, I'm using an abbreviation here so that I don't have to remember any more identities than I have to. The sine over the cosine is the tangent squared plus 1. That's equal to the secant squared because 1 over the cosine is the secant. So wait a secant. I can plug my tangent in there. So the square root of 5 squared. That's 5. And then 5 plus 1 is 6. I take the square root of both sides, but I'm not going to forget that. Plus or minus. And now it's time to get 
choosy. Is my secant positive or negative in the first quadrant? My secant's positive, and that's why I choosy. Plus sign for my secant, square root of 6. Next up, oh, big example, push it. So I have the f f sine of theta and the find the sine of theta and the cosine theta if the cotangent minus 5 halves and the terminal side of theta lies in quadrant 4. Our reference triangle, I'm sure you're like, I can find that third side and then I can read them right off the triangle, but we're trying to make our identity game strong. So let's go and use that. What am I talking about? We'll get that third side. Looks like it's 29. Now when we're choosing, and we're choosing on the hypotenuse, we always choose plus. And that's what that's there. Let me make some room. Here we go. We're using the Pythagorean identity. 1 plus the cotangent squared theta. That's the... The the cosecant of theta. So I can go ahead and throw in the given information that the cotangent minus 5 over 2. Then I'm going to square it. That's how I got my 25. And now what do I do, Adam? That's how I got my 29 over 4. Then I take the square root of both sides, but I'm not going to forget that. Plus and minus. So now it's time to get choosy. The cosecant is dependent on y, so that's why we choose the negative, because our y is negative in quadrant 4. And now we're using the reciprocal identity, so that's the sine is equal to 1 over the cosecant of theta. So then I go ahead and I put that in there. I reciprocate and take the reciprocal as the thing underneath the root. Root, root, rationalize. That's why I got that. Now, let's use the Pythagorean. Ah! I throw in my found sign, but I'm using this form just because it's nicer. And the square root takes care of the square. I add that constant to both sides. I add fractions right there. When I do, I get 25 over 29. I take the square root, I don't forget the plus or minus, now it's time to get choosy. Cosine depends on x, so cosine's positive, and that's why we pick positive. I reduce that. Since it's in quadrant 4, I rationalize. And if you don't believe me, check it! The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse.